Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you for the invitation to present today. Um, we're going to be doing a little bit of a, a tag team between me and Toby, um, so I'll start out. Um, next slide, please, Yvonne. So uh, just to put this in perspective, our RAP, which we call the, the WRAP, is a member of seven regional action plans um, nationally, and I have them listed there. Um, we do coordinate regularly with headquarters on our progress and various other um, topics. Um, so just, just to sort of keep that in mind that we are one of seven RAPs across the country. Uh, next slide, Yvonne. And so what is RAP? Um, you know, there's, there's a bit of overlap with the IEA, um, and this is my interpretation. Different people have, other people have different interpretations of, of the relationship, but there is, there's overlap and we work together. Um, RAP focuses on climate change um, in the Northern California current and in the freshwater habitats. Uh, IEA is focused on current climate and uh, the Northern California current only. And again, that's, that's you know, there's probably exceptions to that. Um, next slide, Yvonne. So RAP is really a loosely organized group of projects. Um, we have very little funding. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but that's the case. Um, most of our projects um, are, are rely on outside funding, and we've been pretty successful at that. Um, we have, we're, we're coordinated with the Northwest Center, the Southwest Center, and the regional office. Um, we, we do coordinate a lot with the regional office, and in fact, the, the RAP 2.0 document has an appendix of sort of regional office needs. So really our focus on providing management tools that the regional office can use. Um, next slide, Yvonne. So just kind of going over the progress. Um, we, we basically um, produced RAP 1.1, that was before my time. Um, in 2016, and that was in response to the National um, Climate SS. What is SS, Toby, again? Um, <laughs> Science strategy. Thank you. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. Um, and so then recently, uh, next slide, Yvonne, we, we produced a five-year synthesis report um, on, on the progress we made on, on RAP 1.0. And Toby will talk about that a, a little bit uh, later on. Um, and, and then we recently completed the RAP 2.0, which is sort of what our envisioned direction will be in the next three years. Um, and this is currently under review, under public review. We've gotten some comments um, from various entities. Um, I think the, the comment period is actually closed for public review. So um, we're, you know, we'd, we'd, we'd like the, any reaction from, from the council on, on this, um, if you could. Um, next slide. So I'm handing over to Toby here. Oh, hey, yeah, I'm taking over. Uh, <laughs> can you hear me all right? So for putting together the, the wrap, we had both external and internal drivers put, helping us put this together. And our main external driver is the council. Um, first of all, we're, we're trying to respond to the revised uh, fishery ecosystem plans and the FEP index of the two sections, the completed uh, ecosystem initiatives and section two there, the new ecosystem in initiative ideas. So we are trying to respond to that and be sensitive to it. Um, the other council input is the uh, annual uh, e ecosystem status report that comes out of the IEA. Um, and we're really trying to get to the point where we update that and automate it somewhat so that we can have synoptic summaries uh, in key areas, uh, automated reports for a quick response rather than the once a year update of uh, outdated information. Um, more connecting of the dots between the drivers and the responses, uh, specifically human dimensions. We need to concentrate more on the human dimensions and economic um, uh, consequences. And then uh, we are looking at developing indicators of long-term climate change. So a, a better understanding of the forage base, if you will. Uh, next, please, Yvonne, thank you. So the internal drivers that's within the two science centers primarily 
Um, back in about 2015, 16, both centers went through uh, internal ecosystem program reviews, and um, some of the aspects of that are still being applied through the two science centers. Um, we also have the ecosystem-based uh, fishery management, EBFM, um, the roadmap. And again, that um, EBFM, we did regional um, uh, summaries. And so for the West Coast, uh, we have the Western Regional Implementation Plan, and the term RIP is thanks to Yvonne. So we have RIP and RAP in our internal uh, drivers and uh, discussion. So um, as we we're talking about now, the, the NOAA Climate Science Strategy, um, our, our RAP is RAP 2.0 is how we plan to go forward. Um, but we're also very hopeful and, and dependent on the Climate Ecosystem and Fisheries Initiative, CEFI, that hopefully that uh, Congress will decide to fund that. Uh, next go round, they didn't in the last. Um, and then also our protected resources um, have been asking us to include more information and more um, science on protected species. And then the big kicker that's really um, motivating us uh, to look at some of this stuff is the fishery response for offshore wind development, uh, wind energy development. So we've got some work that quite a bit of uh, effort is going on and collaboration between the two science centers and the regional office. Next, please. So RAP 1.0, uh, and RAP 1.0, that summary that, that Rich mentioned is a volume with all of the different uh, regional action plans. And um, uh, the, the Western RAP is chapter six in that uh, very slim document of a few thousand pages, I think it is. Um, anyways, the original wrap, we had seven planned actions. Uh, significant progress was made on um, some specific applications in four areas. Um, and uh, first of all, we conducted a number of management strategy evaluations that include climate projections, multiple species, multiple fleets, spatial distribution changes, and economic models. And I we did not put all the manuscripts and papers and publications on this, but they are available if, if uh, anybody wants them. Um, we're working on full lifetime models for Pacific salmon that are explicitly linked to climate projections and management actions. Uh, we've developed the, continued to develop the ecosystem status report. Um, and I mentioned that we're trying to automate that and move it into more real time to help with decision making. And then uh, the dissemination of, of um, climate-related information. For example, the climate, climate vulnerability analyses and other communications. So those are some areas where RAP 1.1 did very well. Uh, if we go to the next slide, um, where RAP 1.0 uh, had three planned actions. Um, they were initiated to various extents, but we don't have completed products. And I might stay here. I think uh, our RAP 1.0 was overly ambitious in terms of the goals that we set, uh, partly given the funding levels and partly given the, the necessity of sort of get, gathering people together to voluntarily work on these things. Um, one thing we still need to do is, is fill out the framework for strategic planning on climate work. So originally it was con conceived as the West Coast Climate Committee and the program was gonna be the West Coast Climate Committee program. Um, the Northwest has their internal group doing this. The Southwest, we have our internal group. The regional office has their climate group. And really what we are striving towards is integrating them um, more closely together. And in fact, we have a workshop coming up in a month uh, looking at how we can do that. Um, we need to build science. Well, um, can I go back one? There we go. Thank you. We need to build scientific expertise within centers. Um, this is going to be especially important to see CEFI uh, comes through, but we've, we're, we're missing a few uh, critical scientists that we need for some of these programs. And finally, uh, we really need to coordinate and standardize existing data collection efforts. Um, this is an ongoing thing. We need to look at our cruises. We need to look at the data we're collecting. We need to look at how the data are being uh, made available. So that, let's see, am I this one? Yes, I am this one. So um, really, uh, in RAP 2.0, the things that we are striving for is uh, informing management. So that's the 
um, National Climate Science Strategy Objectives 1 through 3. Uh, we want to develop and deliver um, the, uh, the ecosystem status report in a more timely way. Uh, we want to develop management strategy evaluations for selected species, and some of these have actually been done. The sablefish, swordfish, and sardine have been done, but I don't think the publications have come out yet. Uh, we're working on coastal pelagic species. Uh, more climate vulnerability assessments. These have been done, but some of them are still in review and we're waiting for them to come out. Um, we want to uh, see if we can't develop further uh, the use of adaptive and dynamic ocean management, um, which is, is really, again, trying to use satellite data, data that we know about different species, uh, put them together to come up with dynamic ways of helping the council manage these species, as opposed to uh, using, say, fixed location, fixed time type of um, uh, fishery management. And then um, we, we still are addressing some of the recommendations from the Council's Climate and Communities Initiative and Scenario Planning. And um, I think I'm on. You're on. Thank you. So then this continue with some of our uh, goals for um, RAP 2.0. Um, so this is this is under NCSS objective four and five. Um, understanding mechanisms, projecting future conditions. Um, so we want to support and strengthen our forecasting models. So we have two programs, JScope and Future Seas, that are are pretty well established. And so we want to um, maintain support for those two projects. Um, we and I, I will mention uh, the Future Seas project just just published a really nice paper on uh, on marine heat waves and predicting marine heat waves. Um, Conduct as as Toby mentioned, conduct salmon climate driven climate driven life cycle modeling for salmon populations. Um, and again, we just published a paper. Um, Lisa Crozier was the author on our, uh, a life cycle model for Snake River spring summer Chinook salmon in relation to changing ocean climate. Um, so we want to advance ecosystem modeling in Northern California currents. And, and again, this is an area that really benefit. Climate Ecosystem Fisheries Initiative. Um, we have a bunch of projects that sort of each use their own ecosystem model. We'd like to kind of coordinate that and really provide sort of off the shelf modeling that people can use in the future. Um, th we had a workshop on called Location, 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 which was based on species distribution modeling. And uh, there's a paper um, that's just about to come out um, from that project, uh, lead author Stephanie Brody um, in climate change biology um, and sort of looks at different approaches to um, the modeling of, of species distributions. Next slide, please. And then in terms of objectives six and seven, um, infrastructure tracking and tracking change. Um, so we wanna maintain the California current integrated Ecosystem analysis, ecosystem, ecosystem status report, um, enhanced strategic planning and capacity building. Um, again, data coordination, collecting and sharing, and, and Toby mentioned this, but we're really trying to examine all of our surveys um, that that measure ecosystems, and you know, ask, can we coordinate better? Are the things that we're missing? Are the things that we're duplicating? And really try and make that process more uh, efficient, um, and then uh, standardized reporting, as, as Toby mentioned. Next slide. Um, one of the capacities um, that we're really trying to expand is the human dimensions, um, and we brought on Dan Holland, this economist, um, and so this has been sort of, this is sort of lacking from RAP 1.0. They're really trying to develop for RAP 2.0, um, and really trying to understand um, how various fishing portfolios um, influence communities um, to extreme events and towards, you know, climate change projections in the future. Next slide. So what would we do if, if we did get um, CEFI funding? Um, you know, the one thing we, this, so this, this would give us um, a funding base that we haven't had um, one of our 
priorities would be to support the ocean modeling, both by um, OAR, NOAA's OAR, which is the MOMS PIX model, um, and support implementation of the West Coast Ocean Forecast System, WCOS, which is the NOS model. Um, the the MOMS 6 model is, is, is something we've really been working on, and we, we get a real boost to sort of bring that into our modeling portfolio. This would be similar to the ecosystem type modeling where we would be able to um, provide you know, one system for everybody to use. I mean, ROM 6, or ROM has been really successful, but it really is sort of, uh, it's, you know, for each application, you need to develop a ROM 6 model for a specific location. ROM 6 really covers the whole Northern California current. Um, so, so that's one thing we could see is, you know, bringing on somebody to be sort of a, a um, intermediary between OAR and, and NIMPS to bring in that modeling. Um, and like I said, to really have that to be an off, <clears throat> off the shelf um, modeling system for people to use. Um, and I, I think that is all we've got. Yeah, so we're, um, gave you a brief presentation. Um, we're open to any questions. Anything else you wanna add, Toby? No, I think not, except, um... I think Yvonne mentioned this earlier that the public comment period is closed, but we can still accept comments from the council. Um, and so we would appreciate any comments the council wants to submit. And I believe the, the RAP 2.0 document will be out um, sometime around the end of the year. Okay, <clears throat> thank you, Rich and Toby for that presentation. So, Yes, um, the council's fish, you know, there was an open public comment period announced in the Federal Register, and I think it closed at the end of July. Um, but, uh, you know, the councils have a special relationship with the agencies. So, uh, um, not just the fisher, the Pacific Fishery Management Council, but several councils asked NOAA, could we have some more time so that we can discuss this in a public setting? So this is the Pacific Council's opportunity and um, the ecosystem work group and other advisory bodies will have the opportunity to, uh, to provide any guidance that we want to the council on how we might comment on this. And so I'm gonna um, see if I remember how to use Ring Central and see if anyone has, raise their hand. Uh, it looks like Elliot. I don't know if that's an old hand or uh, no, a it's, new hand. It's a new hand and I guess okay. I thought my video was working, but it looks like it's not. So I'll, you'll just get this beautiful view to stare at instead. I, I just wanted to ask, you know, I, I appreciated that talk, Toby and Rich, and I realize I'm coming with baggage here, but your initial slide showing the Venn diagram between the RAP and CCIA, I think might have might have been more historical than present. So I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on how those two efforts can better integrate in RAP 2.0 and moving forward. Again, recognizing it's a loaded question coming from me, but. Yeah, coming from you, it's very much a loaded question. Um, <laughs> so I'll take a start and I'll let Rich finish up. But um, I look at it as at this point, the IEA is mostly funded on council processes and, and it really, um, and it, that's just sort of historical how it's happened. It wasn't meant to be that way. Um, we are reaching out, we are trying to work more with the states and, and some of the other organizations, but historically uh, working with the council and, and providing the ecosystem status report consumed most of the effort that we had and also the funding that we had available for it. So um, the IEA has been a little bit more narrowly focused. The RAP, on the other hand, I think of it as sort of an umbrella for all of the climate and ecosystem work that we're trying to do, that it, it should be an organizing principle uh, to help us as we're going forward, as we're working with these models, as we're working with um, these management strategy evaluations, as we're trying to look at dynamic ocean management, all of these can fall under the envelope of, of RAP and hopefully it'll help um, tie them together. Uh, 
but but I also say my understanding of this relationship is relatively fluid uh, and changes over time as we're going through these efforts. And, you know, one thing you, you're aware of as much as anybody is the funding constraints kind of decide what we can and cannot do. So, you know, at this point, the RAP has mostly been able to uh, fund a series of workshops. That's really about the level of funding we've had for the RAP, whereas for the IEA, we've had still light funding, but we, we are able to get the ecosystem status report put together. With it. So, Rich, what do you want to add? Um, uh, you know, uh, thanks, Elliot, for that question. Um, you know, I, I will add there's there's uh, overlap in both sort of the topics that we work on and in people working on those topics. So, um, you know, both the, both the centers and the region. Um, and I do see the, you know, again, if CEFI gets funded next year, that, you know, there's a lot of things we have um, and interests we have in common, um, you know, particularly the ocean modeling. So I, I do see that as sort of a, a, a more of an effort, more of an opportunity to coordinate among the groups in terms of, you know, what do we need um, going forward and, you know, how can we better coordinate in particularly um, the ocean and ecosystem modeling. You know, Elliot, does that meet any of your expectations? Yeah, you know, I'll just mention, I, I'm really hopeful. I mean, you listed a lot of NIMPS directives or drivers of, you know, RAP and ecosystem efforts. And and I, I will say one of my goals on the ecosystem work group is to kind of get towards common messaging and reducing duplication. I'm very curious now to attend this 3 p.m you know, improving council process efficiency as well, because I think that's the kind of area I was targeting with my question. So thank you. Okay, thank you, Elliot, for starting that discussion. And then Corey Niles has his hand up. Corey, if you're speaking, we can't hear you. Still not hearing you. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Kit and Sandra, I don't know if you're still on or if you can help Corey, but if there's somebody else who wants to chime in. Tommy, go ahead. Oh, yeah. It's kind of more of a, I guess, procedural question, but um, for reporting back on the wrap and some of the other things, what is your, like, uh, reporting again, like when do you report against it and to who? So just to make sure this isn't just a, you know, a action plan that gets reviewed every three to five years, but is it like an annual reporting process, progress against something, or are there requirements for, you know, new projects or work to be linked to the various different initiatives and strategies you have in place? Like what's the, I guess, like a tracking mechanism, or whatever other corporate thing going like? Thanks. I think I heard about three quarters of that. Um, you're talking about reporting in, in, you know, what mechanism we use for reporting. Um, and I will say for Corey, if you if you want to type something in a chat, that'd be great too. We couldn't hear we couldn't hear you. Um, in, in terms of reporting, you know, that's a good question. I mean, we don't really have a, a standardized reporting mechanism other than you know we'll probably do it since this is reporting three years. Um, I will say that part of RAP 2.0, there's a table of um, projects and metrics. Um, and so each metric, each each project will have some metrics um, associated with the project. And so, you know, um, I, I think, you know, Toby and I can think about sort of coordinating, you know, the, the, the results of that. But I'll, I will say a lot of the, 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 the products that are coming out of RAP are, are papers. And I mentioned, you know, three or four that have come out recently. Um, so I don't see any kind of annual report going on, um, but I do think that we will be continuing to produce um, papers for public consumption. Okay. Uh, Corey, did you resolve your Can you hear me? Can yes, you hear me now? we can. I yes, think I, did, I think I sat on my mute button, I think. Um, yeah, thanks, Toby and Rich, for, for uh, the presentation. Um, as you'll see or saw, WDFW did uh, 
submit comments, and those were um, led by our, our, our newish climate change coordinator, Harriet Morgan, who's was I don't see her on here. She was hoping to attend, but I know she had other stuff going on today. Um, yeah, maybe a comment. Just it was kind of similar to Elliot's or your answers to Elliot's questions was. Um, I don't know. When we think of NOAA, we think of um, what other federal agency is there <laughs> in the climate change arena. <laughs> and and um, it, the NOAA as a whole, not just NIMS, but NOAA as a whole is is a leader in, in the climate science. So, yeah, just, again, looking for some reactions. I'm very appreciative of the document and all the efforts, but I was pretty. we were pretty surprised, I guess, to see that it was so focused on the council's activities um, and, the, and the fishery ecosystem plan, which is, you know, great for me as one little corner of WDFW and the council, but it seemed almost th that you all do so much more and it wasn't, wasn't captured there. But yeah, I, I to Toby, or you, one of you mentioned um, other things that you're involved with, with the states and helping us with our conservation um goals so yeah i mean could you, could you like elaborate a little more and i know funding is a challenge staffing is a challenge her, hearing all that like but do you have any um thoughts on on what where else you would go beyond side the council to um to apply you know that apply this information to, to decision making so <clears throat> corey thank you for, for those comments and yeah we did receive uh the comments that that you all submitted uh, i read them once I, we haven't started working them into the document yet but we will be um i think it all comes down to funding ultimately uh first of all we felt that in in the first rap iteration um we really <clears throat> put forward an awful lot of stuff that in reality we couldn't do because we didn't have either the manpower or the funding to do it. And so for this go round, we thought we really should scale back and focus on the things that we know we can do. Um, but again, remembering that we think of the RAP as an overall umbrella for almost anything we do climate related. So that as we go forward, uh, we'll definitely be able to include those things as they are able to be accomplished. Um, the other is beyond just the council, you're right. We really, uh, we do want to work more with the states. We, we don't work very much at all with the tribes. Um, there are some definite areas uh, where we could do more. And uh, Rich mentioned that um, in this RAP 2.0, the appendice has um, needs for the, for the regional office. And that, that too, we're trying to really strengthen uh, how we provide science to the regional office. So. It's all there, it's not mentioned, because we wanted to be very careful about not raising expectations beyond what we can do. Yeah, and, and, and I, Corey, I will say that, you know, the, we did have some discussions about the scope of the of the report and, you know, what falls under wrap and what doesn't. Um, there's probably some climate projects that didn't, we didn't include. Um, and I'll also mention, you know, as, as, as Toby said, a lot of our projects are based on funding. Um, and, you know, you guys mentioned, you know, better coordination of ecosystem surveys. Uh, and I mean, I, I totally agree with that. And, you know, I, I think there is opportunities um, for collaboration between NOAA and Washington and other states um, in the future. And, I, you know, I, I definitely think that would be uh, a good way to go um, in terms of, you know, finding places, finding projects that we can work on together um, and sort of strengthening the bond. Thanks, appreciate the responses. Okay, so um, I just wanted to thank you, um, Tommy and Corey for getting the discussion going. And um, I wanted to ask first if there were any other ecosystem work group members who had questions or comments and but also for our members of other advisory bodies or members of the public if you want to ask a question please go ahead and raise your little blue hand using the um, reactions button at the bottom of the screen because i think this is a good opportunity to um pick the brains of the science centers if you'd like. So I'll lay that out there, give people a chance to think about whether they have questions, but EWG, do you have any further questions 
for Toby and Rich. Um, so I'm going to, this is a, you know, knowing as I do the internal folks and who's distributed doing what, this is an awkward thing for me to bring up, but I bring it up all the time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the fishery management council, um, and the ecosystem work group and many of its advisory bodies are very, very interested in, um, seeing the climate vulnerability assessment for non-salmonids completed. And we last heard about the completion of the, you know, sort of workshop work on that in, I think it was 2017. Uh, so, and I know the reason I'm saying, telling other folks that this is awkward is because I know that neither Rich nor Toby have any um, direct pull on that, but uh, so it's not a sort of personal responsibility for them, but um, that might be something that the ecosystem work group wants to suggest that the council mentioned because uh, we've been looking forward to seeing that for quite some time. So, um, and that's me and my ecosystem work group hat, not my NIFS hat, if you will. So I don't know if you have any good news for us on that front, but um, I know there are other people in the call who would be interested if there were. So I think, Yvonne, I think you yesterday were on the call where we heard Lisa Crozier say she did not have an update. And I don't know if Elliot Hazen has heard of any update on those, but I have not heard any update. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, uh, um, you know, this. It, there's a bit of an issue with, um, Michelle McClure, I, I believe, is the lead author, and she's since moved on to female. Um, and um, Melissa Tuck is also an author, and she, you know, so I've been communicating with her. Not recently, I, I will confess, but um, she claimed to be making some progress, but I don't, I don't have an, a, a, a current update on, on the status of that. So, um, thanks for putting us in the hot seat, Yvonne. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> You'll get me back later, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> I will add, we are just as anxious to see it as you are. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so with that, is there anyone um, on the call, uh, not of the ecosystem work group, although EWG, if you've got questions, please go ahead. But is there anyone else who has any questions or comments or wants pointing to different direction, different sections of the document? Let's see, I see one hand up. So Greg Krzykowski, do you want to speak up, please? I see you're muted right now. Yeah. I, oh, there you go. I, I, yeah, I, I heard Toby mention that uh, um, several of the uh, management uh, uh, strategy evaluations had been done. Um, and I would be interested in hearing uh, when we can anticipate uh, seeing those as they are you know, uh, going to be incorporated and relevant to the RAP. Did you guys hear that? Greg Krzykowski was asking about the management strategy evaluations and um, uh, when we might see those. Sorry, I couldn't find my mute button. Um, Gosh, I think a couple of them have been published already, and the others are in in either either in prep or, or um, in press. But I'm, you know, I can't remember off offhand. Um, I, I'm sorry to keep pointing to Elliot, but he's my go-to guy in a lot of these things. And Elliot, do you recall where we are in the management strategy evaluation publications? No, I mean, I think there's a few different ones underway, I, um, but I'm not as directly involved with that work. It might be a good thing for us to reach out to some of the, our colleagues and maybe report back at a, one of the afternoon meetings next week. Yeah, I thought Barb Mueling had two, the CPS and what, Albacore. I thought they were finished. And, um, oh, boy, was Desiree working on one? I can't remember. I think Desiree's leading them, yeah. And uh, for, for the Southwest, and then um, Kristen Marshall, I think, is leading MSC efforts in the Northwest. Yeah, and I think uh, uh, Melissa Haltuck and Nick Tol published um, a sable fish, I want to say, 
MSC. Um, so yeah, there there has been some progress on MSCs. And and yeah, and and, and like like Elliot said, I think uh, Mary is working on some of the Northwest. Okay, thank you. Oh, there we go. We got something in the chat from Mary. Kristen has been leading efforts on Pacific Cake. Okay, and um, and then Jamil also had a, a chat comment about um, Greg asking if you've got specific MSCs you're looking for that um, we can connect you up to the right people. And maybe maybe that might be a, a comment from the EWG. I'm just making a note with a, an analog device about this. Uh, Something from us about um, we don't have to list all the publications, but um, you know something looking for a list of publications. Okay. Okay. And all right. Seeing, Thank you. Is there anything else? Sorry. Go ahead, Elliot. No, I was just saying Greg's comment. I think for the CPS MSC, I think it was um, Peter Kuriyama that's leading those efforts, and I, I re I'm going to reach out to Desiree and Peter and see if we can either get an update or um, an opportunity for follow up. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, Corey Niles had a question before I let you guys go. Yeah, thanks. Um, I guess I, and I'll, one part of the, I'm recalling the wrap, um, one part of it that I think we appreciated was your, your honesty about the funding situation. And Rich, I think you mentioned um, I'm going to forget the name of, of it, of the, but you're basically your, your climate initiative that that NIMS has been hoping to get funded and I think was in the president's budget. Um, but just, yeah, before you all go, could you, could you just elaborate for folks here, remind us of um, what the funding requests have, are, what, what you, what, what you, what you're hoping for, um, how the council, you know, may or may um, support that. Just, you know, can, for folks who, like myself, who haven't read the rap in a month or two, so, can you remind us what, what the hope, what the funding hope is is in in the near term, and what what you all hope to do with that? Yeah. So uh, the um, you mentioned the CEFI um, that was in uh, in the twenty two budget for a long time and got hacked uh, towards the end. Um, it's currently in the twenty three budget. That, that would provide, I think, three um, full-time FTEs for both the centers. Um, and, I, you know, I think a lot of that, um, you know, so each center had plans already developed for those FTEs. Um, and, you know, at least half of those FTEs between the Southwest and Northwest would be basically um, in, in incorporating ecosystem management into stock assessments type of thing. So, um, we also in the Northwest were looking at sort of a more liaison between um, NIMS and, and OAR to sort of bring on the, the MOM6 modeling. Um, so, you know, uh, that, so that's in the 23 budget. Um, we're really hoping through, uh, you know, I think the 22 budget was, uh, when it finally got passed, it was a little bit more pandemonium and they were looking to, to sort of cut things wherever they could. Um, but it is in the 23 budget, um, and you know we're we're hoping that gets passed because um, that would you know definitely provide a lot of support not just for us but but also the ecosystem um, teams in the in the northwest and southwest. So Corey, I might just add that I mean a lot of the funding is to go to OAR for the development of of a global model MOM six that can be used in all regions, not just the West Coast, but bring uniformity to all the regions in terms of the basic climate model. And then the FTEs that that uh, Rich mentioned uh, in the centers are to help take that output, work with the scientists, and develop the, the biogeochemistry uh, applications that need to go with that for us to really start looking at um, uh, future climate variability and change. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>